In this video, we will see how to get started with the Porting Assistant for .NET, how to assess an application's project files, and how to use the assessment results. We'll also see how to use the Assistant to get started with porting projects to .NET Core. So let's begin at the product homepage. From here, I can access documentation and other resources about the Assistant, as well as download and install the latest version, which I'll do now. The installation is very simple, and when it completes, the Assistant starts. However, the installer also places an entry on your start menu for future use. With the installation complete, now would be a good time to remind you that the .NET Core 3.1 SDK should also be installed if you don't have it already. And you will also need an AWS account. If you don't have one, you can sign up using the link below. With the Assistant and .NET Core 3.1 SDK installed, I'm ready to start assessing my applications and their associated project files. The application I'm going to use in this overview is called NotCommerce. It's a free and open source e-commerce application. The application's source code is also available on GitHub. The latest version of NotCommerce has already been ported to .NET Core, so I'm going to work with an older version. This older version corresponds to NotCommerce release 3.80. At that time, the application was based on ASP.NET and the .NET Framework version 4.5.1. I've already gone ahead and cloned the source repository from GitHub to my machine. Later in this video, I want to show you the changes that the Assistant makes to project files as they are ported, so to make that easy, I've created a branch in my local clone of the repository. This branch is based on the tag that was associated with version 3.80. Let's now get started with assessing the application. Returning to the Assistant, and as this was a new installation, I'm positioned at the Assistant's home page, so I'm going to click Get Started to begin the assessment. Before we begin, the Assistant asks me to update some global settings. First, it asks me to select a credential profile. If you used any of the other AWS tools, such as the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio, the AWS Tools for PowerShell, or the AWS CLI, then you are likely already familiar with credential profiles. A credential profile holds what are known as AWS Access and Secret Keys that tools can use to access AWS services on my behalf. The profile associates a set of keys with a name, and that name is used to select those keys in the tools. To create credential profiles, you can use the other AWS tools or a simple text editor. So that's all the assistant is asking for, the name of a credential profile that already exists and which contains keys that it can use to communicate with AWS. First, the keys associated with the credential profile I select are used to download the model data that will be used when assessing applications and to provide recommendations. Secondly, the credential profile is also used to send telemetry data, if I choose, to help improve both the assistant and the data models. It's possible to opt out of sending telemetry data if you wish, but we hope you will consider leaving this option enabled. The documentation for the assistant describes what data is sent, but briefly it's any errors that occur when running assessments, porting, or when performing other functions in the assistant. The names and versions of public NuGet packages that are assessed. It's important to note that data about your private NuGet packages is not disclosed. And finally, performance metrics for assessments run on public NuGet packages and the amount of time taken to assess a solution. Once I've made my selections for credential profile and telemetry, I can move on to select a solution to assess. Here, I'm going to open the solution file associated with NotCommerce in my local branch and start the assessment. Assessment of a solution can take a few minutes, obviously depending on the number of projects and files to be analysed, so I'll fast forward to completion here. OK, the assessment is now completed and we'll dig into the results in a moment. For now, I want to point out that the Assess Solutions page we are positioned at is where the Assistant would normally start if I'd assessed any other solutions in my application portfolio. From this page, I can reassess the solution, perhaps to update the data after some porting activity had been made. I can also assess additional solutions, and I can remove them too when I'm done porting. And as we will see later, I can also export the assessment data to a comma-separated value, or CSV file, for use outside of the Assistant. Let's now discuss the assessment data and what it means. For each assessed solution, the assistant reports the number of project files that have been ported so far, zero in this case. The incompatible packages value indicates the number of NuGet packages used by the projects in the solution that are incompatible with .NET Core. This value includes both public and your private packages. The incompatible NuGet packages are not, however, the only concern, so the assistant also reports the number of API calls made by the application that are also incompatible with .NET Core. This all brings us to the portability score. The portability score is an indication of how portable, overall, the application is. We'll also see shortly that each assessed project has its own score. Porting a project to .NET Core consists of converting the project file, updating NuGet packages, and resolving incompatible APIs. 
Incompatible API usage must be resolved manually using your preferred IDE or source code editor. Portability scores are computed as the number of compatible APIs divided by the number of incompatible APIs and expressed as a percentage. The higher the score, the less effort will be required to complete the port in an editor. Basically, the portability score can help me decide where to start porting if I have multiple solutions to port. And within each solution, I can use the per project score along with additional data from the assessment to help me decide which projects within the solution to focus on first. Let's now dig a little deeper into the solution assessment by clicking on the solution name. The solutions assessment page again shows me the overall results, including the score, but adds additional tabs giving further insight into the assessment data. Let's take each tab in turn, starting with the projects tab. The projects tab lists all the projects in the solution. For each project, I can see the framework version that it targets and how many other projects in the solution that the project references. Although this is useful to know, there's another even more useful metric for any given project, and that is how many other projects it itself is referenced by. And I'll look at how I can determine that in a moment. Earlier, when I looked at the overall solution assessment, I discussed the results for incompatible packages, APIs, and score. Here we see the same assessment properties, but scoped to each project, so I can get a feel of how a project contributes to the overall solution results. For example, perhaps one project stands out as being a hotspot for package and API usage, which are incompatible with .NET Core. Finally, I can also see the current port status for each project file. This is helpful for large applications constructed from lots of projects, where the porting activity might take place over a period of time. Moving on to the Project References tab, here I can see a graphical version of the references between projects, part of which was shown in the Reference Projects column on the Projects tab. From this view, it's easy to see where the reference hotspots exist. To help with the visualization, clicking on a project highlights the references. This view is particularly helpful when deciding where to start with porting projects, so that I get the so-called most bang for my buck early in the process. What I'm looking for are the projects that are depended on the most, and those are the projects I should consider porting first. To put it another way, when using the Project References view, I'm looking for projects where there are more inbound arrows than outbound. Let me give you an example. Selecting the not.web project, I can see that it references four other projects and is referenced by one, the inbound arrow. In contrast, look at the inbound references for the not.data project. Ten other projects have a dependency on this project. The not.data project is therefore one that I'd potentially target early when I start porting. The graph shows me there are other projects that give me even bigger benefits should I choose to start with them. For example, look at the inbound references for not.core and similarly not.services and not.web.framework. Using the Project References view, I've immediately identified four projects which, if I start porting them first, will accomplish most of the work around internal dependencies and get me off to a good start in terms of progress. Let's move on to the NuGet packages consumed by the projects that make up the application, which we can view on the NuGet Packages tab. Here we can see at a glance which packages are immediately compatible with .NET Core, the version currently being referenced, and whether a suggested replacement upgrade is available. The Source Files column tells me how many source files in the application make a reference to the namespaces in the package, and APIs tells me how many APIs are used. For packages that are compatible and have a suggested replacement upgrade, I might, however, decide to not accept the upgrade suggestion. For example, newer versions of packages might increase the number of incompatible APIs that I need to update in my source code. This means I might be better off using an older, yet still compatible version. We'll see where the assistant can help me determine this trade-off decision later, as I start to port a project. To finish up our look at the tabs, APIs shows me all the API calls made by the application and again their compatibility status and how many references there are to each API. The final tab, Source Files, lists every source file in the application with an indication of how many API calls made within the file are incompatible. Notice also the portability score. Recall from earlier I said this was computed from the division of compatible calls by incompatible calls. In this view I can see the relative effort needed to port different source files. In other words, I'm looking at which files have the most API calls that I'll need to replace by hand in a source code editor once the project file itself has been ported. Remember that a port involves not just updating the project file and package references, but also updating the API usage in the source code itself. Source files with greater numbers of incompatible calls are going to require more work to use different APIs, and this becomes evident in their lower portability scores. Having examined the assessment data, I'm now in a good position to start porting. I know which projects my application depends on the most, and the relative porting difficulty for each project in terms of how many incompatible APIs are being used, and whether I can upgrade NuGet package dependencies or need to find new replacements. 
Recall from earlier I said that when porting, we want to start with the base libraries that are dependent on the most. This gives you the most impact and momentum when starting. Based on the project references view, I identified four projects that were dependent on the most. Not.data, Not.core, Not.services, and Not.web.framework. In this video, I'm not going to have time to port an entire project, and certainly not the entire solution. And since the latest version of Not.commerce already supports .NET Core, there would really be little point in doing so. But what I do want to do is walk you through how you get started with porting and how the assistant helps in the process. To do this, I'm going to use the not.core project. Before moving on to start porting, I want to point out that up to now, all of the data I've been looking at has been application-wide, spanning all of the projects. I can, however, also scope the data down to an individual project. I'm going to make use of this to take a closer look at the not.core project to see what work lies ahead of me once I've ported the project file. In the Projects tab, I first select the project. Then I click View Details. In the resulting view, when I switch to the other tabs I just discussed, the data is now scoped to the selected project. Next, I want to look at the Source Files tab. In particular, I want to take a look at the reported APIs that are incompatible. Recalling the discussion about targeting the biggest gains first, I'm going to sort the data so that I see the files containing the most calls to incompatible APIs. In other words, I want to see which files might need the most effort to port. It looks like nopengine.cs is one of the files I'll be spending a lot of time with in an editor once the project file is ported, so I'm going to examine the file more closely. As I scroll through the file, the assistant shows me where the incompatible API calls can be found. This is useful data I can make use of later in my source code editor or IDE. There's also an important recommendation at line 57. The assistant is telling me that the existing call will be incompatible when the project is ported to .NET Core. However, it also has a suggestion that if I upgrade to a later version of the Autofac package, I won't need to make any source code changes at this location. So that's what I'll probably do. Of course, if I were doing this for real, I'd look at pretty much all the files, or at least the ones affected significantly by incompatible APIs, and gather data about recommended package upgrades where they exist. But for this video, I have enough to get started. So let's start porting. Using the breadcrumb trail at the top of the view, I can quickly get back to the overall solution assessment. And once again, I'm going to select the not.core project. This time, however, I'll click Port Project. As you use the assistant to port projects, it handles the update of project file format from that used with .NET Framework projects to the new .NET Core format for you. And it can update selected NuGet package references too, as we'll see. Therefore, I need to tell the assistant how to handle modified project files, and I have two choices. First, I can elect to have the application source code copied to another location. When I choose the Copy to New Location option, I then need to set the folder that the application code, project files, and solution file will be copied to. Note that the chosen location will contain only a copy of the code and project files, not any Git or source code repository information. The other option, Modify Source in Place, doesn't make a copy and simply causes the original files to be updated. You might select this if, like me, you're working on a branch in a source code repository dedicated to porting the application. If you choose the In Place option, do be aware, though, that when you port a project to .NET Core, it likely will not immediately build cleanly. For example, any use of incompatible APIs remaining in the project's source files will still need to be corrected by hand once the project file itself has been ported. Until those are addressed, the project will not build. For this video, I'm going to choose the Modify In Place option and click Save to proceed. And by the way, I only need to choose this option once per solution. To port the project file, I first need to set my intended target framework, which will be .NET Core 3.1. At this point, I can also choose to upgrade some or all of the packages that the project references. In our look at the not.core project earlier, remember that I examined a source file where there was a recommendation to upgrade the Autofac NuGet package to eliminate usage of at least one incompatible API, and here's where I can do that. Notice the deprecated API call data against each version, and recall that earlier I said that I might choose to not upgrade to the latest version of a package if it increased the number of incompatible APIs that then need to be updated. In this case, there is no difference. I can see that no matter which version I choose, the same number of deprecated API calls will remain. In this case, I would choose to follow the recommendation and upgrade to the latest version. If, however, I saw differing numbers by version, then the tool is helping me make that trade-off decision between upgrading to the latest version with potentially more work to resolve incompatible APIs versus staying with an older version for a time and having fewer APIs to fix up. To show what happens when I elect to upgrade a package, I'm just going to choose to upgrade Autofact to the latest version and ignore the other packages. Notice the deprecated API calls data alongside the packages updated, again showing that 19 of the 22 APIs available in this package will become deprecated with this version. 
Clicking on this data shows me a list of what I'll need to work around. With my target framework and selected package upgrades made, clicking port starts the process of updating the project file. By the way, if I'd chosen the copy option earlier when asked what to do with modified files and the selected project was the first to be ported in the solution, this is when the assistant would now copy the application source code to the chosen location. Let's look now to see what changes the assistant made to the project. Inside Visual Studio Code, I have the not.core project folder open, and I can see that the git support in the editor has detected file changes because I chose the modify in place option for the port. It's reporting that the project file and assembly info files have been updated, and the packages.config file has been deleted, as it's not used in .NET Core projects. Let's look at the project file changes in particular. I can see in the project file that it's been converted to the newer and simpler .NET Core format. The target framework has been set per my .NET Core 3.1 target selection, and I can also see my elective upgrade to the AutoFAC package. Scrolling further, I can see that the assistant also removed the list of source files. .NET Framework project files listed the source files to include in the project build, but this is not done in .NET Core projects. Having the assistant handle all these steps when porting project files saves me quite some time, and greatly reduces the scope for making editing errors. So that was an example of how to get started with porting a project, but we may not be done. As I've mentioned, not every change can be automated. From the overview for the project, we can see that the port status indicates the project file has been ported, and we know from earlier that by upgrading the AutoFAC package following the suggested recommendation, the new version took care of some incompatible APIs, but notice that some API incompatibilities remain. It's at this point I need to jump into my IDE or source code editor of choice and fix the API usage. As I showed earlier, I can use the assistant source files view to help me locate precisely where I need to make further changes, or of course I could simply rely on build errors. Once the incompatible API usage has been addressed, that would complete the entire porting process for that project. I'd then start on the next project, again using the assessment data to help determine the next best place to start. This process continues until the whole collection of projects in the solution has been ported. For those who want to analyze the assessment data further, outside of the assistant, it's also possible to export the data as a collection of comma-separated value, or CSV files. To do this, I simply click the Export Assessment Report button and select the folder in which the data will be placed. The assistant exports the files into a zip file, which I'll need to give a name. When you open the resulting zip file, you'll see four files corresponding to APIs, NuGet packages, projects, and source files. Let's take a quick look at one of the files. Here we can see the assessment data related to the NuGet packages that are being used. So that's how I can export assessment data and do additional analysis of my own outside of the assistant. Finally, Earlier in this video, I talked about telemetry collection and how the assistant makes use of contributed data to further refine how comprehensive and accurate those suggested replacements are over time. The models powering the assistant are the result of analyzing hundreds of thousands of unique packages with millions of package versions, and if you're interested in the models, you can find them here on GitHub. As I mentioned, we very much hope that you'll consider helping improve accuracy and completeness of the results by contributing your data. In this video, we've seen how to download and install the assistant, how to assess an application starting from its solution file, and how to make use of the assessment data when porting the projects in a solution. We also saw how to get started with porting projects, relying on the assistant to automatically update the project file format and references, and how to discover what incompatible APIs need to be addressed in my application, using your preferred source code editor or IDE to complete the process and make the application compatible with .NET Core.